Thank you all for tuning in. This is Charles Elroy. We're going to start our match of Top Gap versus MMT here shortly. Um, there are some technical difficulties with everybody loading into the lobby, so uh, just give us a moment and we'll get started here shortly. Thanks for tuning in. Thank <laughs> you. 
worst that could happen. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Charles Elroy, and what we have here is a match between Top Gap and MMT. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. The bands are underway. We're going to see Jinx and Lulu both banned. Um, weak Jinx, a super good hyper carry, and Lulu pairs well with the attack speed champion, so that just makes sense. We've got a Kane ban coming out and a Valkaz ban. Vi is going to get taken out of the pool, and the last champion to get banned is going to be Camille. Okay. Uh, I gotta say, Vi isn't super strong these days. I don't see a lot of her played in the meta and in the pro play, so I'm surprised to see that ban come out, but uh, they must respect the the enemy uh, jungler to not want him or her to be on Vi. Um, same thing with Camille. Not super strong or not like in meta at this point, but... Um, it's an interesting pick, and uh, I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out. Now, we've got Zack and Mordekaiser locked in. Zack has been very strong here lately. Mordekaiser has been very strong here lately, and the team fight potential for both those guys, though different, is incredible. You've got Zack who can bounce in, slow people down, and just start pumping out damage, but is a great gap closer. You've also got Mordekaiser who can take somebody out of the game entirely for a couple seconds and make it, uh, you know... A, a very good advantage for one team. We've got Diana and Shen. Uh, Diana's a very strong jungler right now. I love playing Diana in the jungle when I get a chance. Um, we've got Draven and Yone. So uh, we'll have to see where they're swapping everybody around to. Um, Nocturne going to get banned. He's been very strong in lane. His roam potential and gank potential is outrageous. So very excited for that. We've also got the Vayne and the Tristana getting banned, and the Kaisa. A lot of ADCs targeted in this last series of bans. The, they don't want to see somebody like a Vayne just hyperscale out of there and start doing damage. We've got a Misfortune locked in. Um, very strong. Great, uh, great ult when paired with the Leona, so it's interesting that they picked the Leona on the opposite side to take that away from her. And then the Alistar comes through. So I'm excited for this game. Um, we've got... We've got quite a setup here. We've got, it looks like, Shin into Mordekaiser, Zack into Diana, um, Silas into Yone, Draven into Misfortune, and then uh, the Leona and Alistar. If you're watching the stream right now, let me know who you think won the draft. I'd love to hear your thoughts, if it was red side or blue side. Let's see. Blue side is going to be Top Gap, and the red team is going to be MMT. And, uh, oh, surprise, we've got some... Votes for blue coming out from their jungler, so uh, no surprise there. Um, I, if we're looking at it, I think that uh, I think both teams have their strengths, right? I, I think that the red side team is going to be a little bit more squir skirmish oriented, uh, whereas I think the uh, the blue team is going to be a little bit more team fight oriented. I think if you can get a Shen ult to come through, you can lock up people with Zack. You've got Silas taking the ults, locking people down with the CC paired with Leona, and then Draven just outputting damage the whole time. There's a real chance that they've got a very strong team fight set up available to them. However, on the flip side, you've got Diana, Yone, both huge burst uh, potential when they come out onto the field. Mordekaiser, who's able to drop somebody off of uh, a fight in like a 2v3, you can turn it into a a 2v1 real quickly, and that makes it a lot more difficult to have not have somebody to play around. You've got the Misfortune. Um, thank you. I appreciate that, Birgensen's mother. It's very nice to see that uh, sub come through. Um, also, if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the follow button. I do scrims almost every night of the week. Um, but with the Misfortune and the Alistar as well, um, I think you've got a lot more potential for skirmishes on the red side, for team fights on the blue side. Uh, so I'm excited for this match. I've been seeing a lot of Mordekaiser come through. I've been seeing a lot of Yone. I've been seeing a lot of Leona. Um, some of the picks that I don't see as often, uh, Zach. I have not seen him picked a lot, so I'm excited to see how he's going to work on the map, um, especially with the team comp having the ability to have Shen alt in on one of his pieces even or something like that. There's lots of different plays that they can make to, uh, to make that Shen alt work. Um, so that's going to be a really interesting kind of um, component to the game. You've also got the uh, the CC that Alistar offers along with the Misfortune Alt. Um, that's going to be something incredible to see too. So I'm really excited to see how these teams are going to work out. Um, and yeah, 
thank you very much for tuning in. This is going to be a three block series, so three games between these two teams rotating. This is again top gap on the blue side, and we've got MMT over on the red side. In about a minute or so, we'll get the game started, so stay tuned, and thank you very much for tuning in. All right, and we are about ready to get loaded into the game, and we'll be able to see some of the summer spells that they picked and uh, their runes, so we can get a little commentary going on that, and then the game will start. This is the first out of three, and here we go. Um, teleport coming through on the top side. We've got a teleport coming through for Silas while the uh, Yone has Ignite. Both are ADCs with heal and then Exhaust coming in through Leona and uh, Ignite coming through on the Alistar. So it looks like the uh, red team here is set up with a lot more kill pressure whereas again the blue side is going to be doing a lot more of the team fighting scenario. So I'm excited to see how this actually plays out um, but that's kind of the exact thing I expected to see. Let's get everything set up here so that we can begin this game when they load onto the rift. There we go. And the players are loading onto the rift now. Let's see what some of the buys come through, if there's anything interesting or noteworthy here. Silas going the Dark Seal. Chilling Smite coming out for Zach. Challenging Smite coming out for Diana. Everything else looking pretty... Oh, Silas decided to change his mind and go with the Doran's Ring. Um, everything else is looking pretty standard here. Both teams look like they're going to do a five point. Nothing too crazy. We won't see any invades, at least at this point. Zach going to go ahead and back here and just switch himself out to a sweeper. Nothing too crazy there. And a little action over in the bot lane area. Looks like with Diana starting on the top side, they are going to uh, post up in the bush down there. Maybe try and get a cheese uh, going on, but we'll have to see. A little flex from the Draven just to let us know what he's all about. And here we go. All right, so it looks like uh, Misfortune and Alistar decided not to do anything too crazy there. I'm just trying to get the level two push off on the uh, on the other lane. So, a lot of trading going on here from the Shen going hard into the Mordekaiser. He's been taken down about half health already. So far, nothing too crazy. I'll pull that back if we get into a team fight here. That way we can see CS advantage, stuff like that. Now 
Miss Fortune doing a good job getting a little poke onto Leona there early. There goes Shen, doing some more work on the Mordekaiser. He's going to get pulled back in. Beats him to level 3, though. And here's Zach for the gank on mid. Yone trying to get out of there. Uses his E. He's going to pop back to the same spot, though. Zach just waiting for it to happen, and he locks him up. More damage coming out, but the passive is triggered on Zach, and it looks like Yone is going to give over first blood to the Silas there. Zach was able to have his passive trigger and still stay alive. Yeah, unfortunately for that Yone, he just wasn't able to chase down the Silas with his E and uh, couldn't output the damage on him. Was able to knock down the Zack, but by then Silas had already roamed back down and that first blood went over to him relatively quickly. Ah, that bullet took a little bit of a jump. Leona re-engaging on the Misfortune, stunning her down, taking quite a bit of damage, but that Misfortune is getting hurt in the process. Is she going to fall? Turret shot is going to take out the Leona. Alistar gets the kill on the bot side. There's the alley re-engage onto the Draven. Misfortune pumping out a couple shots. A lot of damage comes out. Has to flash, and Alistar gets two kills out of that. Mordekaiser uh, taking some damage here himself from the top laner. Has to flash to try and get away. Shen matches with flash. A lot of damage coming out, and the Shen will secure the kill on the Mordekaiser. That puts this game at a 2-2. Two with a little bit of a gold vantage in favor of the red team for getting that, uh, for, I'm sorry, for out CSing, it looks like. It looks like the gold difference is mostly coming from that Diana and from the uh, Misfortune there. And that Alistar coming back with Moby Boots, he's rich. Good thing both the kills went to him. Dragon now spawning on the map. We'll see if any team wants to start to put Pryo and uh, pressure on that, or if they're just going to kind of uh, stay on the top side. Diana already starting to roam down. And there's some uh, more damage coming out onto the Shen. He's got the wave. Uh, well, he was trying to freeze the wave there, but unfortunately it's just going to crash under. Looks like he'll still be able to catch most of this, though. Oh, he's going to go in on this. Zach coming in for the bounce. There it is. A lot of damage coming out on the Mordekaiser. Is able to get out of there. Nope, he's going to get caught up and pops his gray health. He might be able to take out the Shen with him. Uh-oh, here comes the, uh, the flash from the Zack, able to get away from the Mordekaiser. And Mordekaiser was able to turn that fight around very well for having the engage come from the Zack and the Shen on there. Good job to the Mordekaiser for getting that kill on the Shen. Trades it out. All right, we've got Diana coming down to the bot side. The blue side uh, ADC team is uh, pushed in a little bit, but unfortunately she's not going to gank or anything there. Just going to go back and get her gromp. Draven trying to poke out this misfortune as much as he possibly can here. Good trades from the Yone onto the Silas, keeping him at half health, trying to keep him from getting up too close to that wave. The Shen is just going to try and freeze this here. And blue team is going to put, uh, put some pressure on the dragon at this point. Diana comes in. Leona is able to lock her up with a stun. The Diana alts out. Tries to get away. A lot of damage coming out onto the Diana. It's a 4v3 at this point. There goes the Zack for the jump trying to lock up both of them. And it looks like they are going to lock down the kill. Leona gets the all-star kill. And Silas gets the misfortune kill. That is now four man on the bot side here to lock up the Drake. And that'll be Ocean Drake over to the blue team. Not Ocean Drake, Air Drake, sorry, Cloud Drake. And it does look like Mordekaiser would be able to trade his second kill onto the Shen while that was all going on. I know we got a brief glimpse of it. Um, so that Mordekaiser is going to start to snowball, especially because he hasn't backed here in a little bit. So when he comes back, he is going to be having a little bit more, uh, little bit more buying potential than the Shen did. 
Silas going in on the Yone. Yone taking a little bit of damage, trying to trade out here. Going to all in, take a turret shot. Gets the Ignite off. Will he be able to kill the Silas? Yes, he does. Yone is able to lock down the kill on the Silas with the Ignite there. Good job taking the turret dive. Pumps out some damage onto the Zack and is going to disengage. And both of them are going to shake hands and walk away in the mid lane. And my daughter is here. Emily, tell me, who do you think is going to win, the red team or the blue team? I would say the red team. Okay, and why do you think the red team is going to win? Because the red team has more compassionate and really strong players than the blue team. Compassionate and strong players. So my daughter's vote is for the red team. Um, like I said, I think the team fighting will go over to the blue team. So we've got family drama starting already with my seven-year-old. And here comes Diana coming in to help out with the Mordekaiser and the Shen topside. The dive comes in. The alt goes off. Shen taking quite a bit of damage. The Mordekaiser securing uh, a lot of damage there at the end, but it will be the Diana that locks up the kill on the Shen. That now puts the Shen at a 1-3. in three. He is having a rough time in this top lane. And Red Team's going to start up the Rift Herald here. Leona already completing her support item at 9 minutes in. She's been doing quite a bit of poking, uh, getting some damage on there. Draven finds himself up almost 20 CS here in the bot lane. Even though uh, Alistar has got those kills... Draven is the one with all the gold right now, so we're going to have to see how this shakes out. If he continues to scale with that, plus, uh, plus his adoration, he could get to the point where he is uh, snowballing through the rest of the game. You've got Silas, two kills up onto the, uh, onto the Yone. Looks like he's going for a garage sale build between the Lost Chapter and he's got his arm guard on there. So he's not going to have a completed item here for a minute, but it's a wise choice going into that Yone. It makes sense. We see two uh, legions coming through on uh, top side red. So we're looking at two rift makers, one going on to the uh, Diana, the other going on to the Mordekaiser. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this fight or how this team, uh, how this game goes right now. Diana hovering in the area. Blue side pushed up a little bit. She may be coming in for a gank here, but she was spotted on vision, so they're going to give her the respect she deserves. Yone takes this opportunity with Pryo to also roam down, so it's going to be a 4v2 here in the bot lane, and we might expect something to happen here. No, they understand vision's going to come through. They see the blue team back off, and everybody will just reset. That's a good read coming from the Yone and a good read coming from the bot lane. And this Mordekaiser tied up in CS, up one kill. He's uh, he's doing what he needs to. There's the Raven taking a cue from the... Uh, oh, here's the Engage. The alt comes down from uh, Misfortune. A lot of damage onto the Draven, and that's another kill over to Alistar. Um, this is Yone pumping out damage onto the side of blue. The alt comes down from Shen, and we've got ourselves a Fiesta here. Looks like Misfortune is going to fall over to the Shen. And the Shin is going to get ganged up on by the Yone and the Mordekaiser. He will fall down, and now we've got just the di um, now we've got just the Silas and the Leona in the area. They're going to try and stay alive. Silas is going to try and stop this from crashing in as much as he can. And that is a great realm. We see lots of alts busted out there. Shin alt comes down. Shin flashes down. Uh, Mordekaiser teleport comes in. We see lots of uh, lots of summer spells and alts across the map being burned there. The Misfortune alt come down. There's the Hex Flash over from uh, Alistar. And we're going to see Rift Herald dropped here mid now. It looks like they're going to take advantage of the fight down in the bot lane. And Diana will get first turret gold over to the red team. That puts them at about a 3k gold advantage. And Diana is going to go ahead and get on out of there. And with Dragon spawning here in just about 10 seconds, they're going to use that priority they have and try and put pressure to get their first Drake of the game here. This will be an Ocean Drake, meaning Infernal or Mountain is going to be the soul we see these teams fighting over for. Uh, Infernal would be very fun to see on these teams with the damage output that they have. Yeah. 
All right, both teams. Both teams here starting to fight over the dragon. The blue team is in position and starts to melt it down about halfway from health. Here comes the other team now moving in. Alistar engages. Zack is able to secure the dragon. A fight's breaking out. We will see Alistar fall over to the Zack. We've got more damage coming out onto the blue team. They're not going to make it. Leona tries to flash out. A lot of damage coming out from the red team. Mordekaiser's passive is just melting through people. Shen will fall to the Diana. Mordekaiser is able to lock up the Silas. The blue team is trying to turn it around on the red team, but unfortunately they will get over a, uh, They will all fall. And that is going to be an ace for the blue team, providing they mop up the goo here with Zack, and that will be the first ace of the game going over to MMT. They're going to take advantage of their position here and start getting some extra turrets for another 30 seconds down in this bot lane. The Misfortune could really use the gold right now because this Alistar has been going in and mopping up the kills. No comments about it, you know what I mean? He's just doing what he needs to do to secure the kills. I've always been told that KS means kill secured, not kill stilled. You'd rather have somebody off the map than worry about it. So good job to the red team for getting all that secured. That's a 6,000 gold lead at about 15 minutes in for the red team. Uh, however, we have both drakes going over to the side of blue. Those drakes don't fall off. They stack up. So uh, as this game goes on, those are going to be advantageous for them. There's Leona accidentally walking into the pole. Gets the stun on the Mordekaiser, and he finds himself outnumbered here, 3-1. to one. Now you've got Misfortune joining the fight as well. The ultimate comes down from Leona, and Mordekaiser now finds himself 4-1, to one, taking quite a bit of damage and will fall over to the Zack. Diana and Misfortune went ahead and got themselves out of a situation they did not see winning for them. And this Draven is continuing to CS like a boss. He is up 30 CS over the Misfortune at this point. Misfortune finally getting some kills on her. Draven still has none. I'm assuming in this back he will be cleaning, uh, completing his Immortal Shield bow. Nothing comes from the Hex Flash and Alistar engage there. There's the Immortal Shield bow complete on Draven. Zack engaging over onto the Yone. Yone pops a Z, tries to get out of there, uses his ult, putting damage onto the enemy red team. Silas helping him try and cut him, uh, cut down with the Zack, but unfortunately Zack will fall to the Yone. Silas is uh, pretty beefy. He's outputting some damage on both these guys. He has a chance to take him here. He's going to run away. There goes one kill over to the Silas. He's able to lock up the kill onto the Alistar, and he finishes with the kill onto the Yone, securing two kills in mid. Um, trading out a two for one. Very good to the Silas. Draven rotating mid now. Shen engaging on the Mordekaiser, taking a little bit of damage here as he crashes the wave into the blue turret. Passive procked, and he's going to step outside of that and let it fall off. With Shen, you've got to respect his passive. You don't realize it, but after three abilities or autos, that thing pops right back up and you start taking damage for a while. You've got to step away. You cannot just be engaged in that unless you have a couple people helping melt down the Mordekaiser. And we've got a 3v2 busting out here in the bot lane. Draven is able to disengage wisely, and they kind of step back and reset. Mordekaiser chasing deep into enemy jungle here, trying to steal blue away from Zack. The smite comes out of Zack. He's able to secure the blue. But we've got the rest of the teams joining. We could find ourselves here in another team fight scenario. Let's see how this breaks out as the red team puts themselves in a position to go ahead and fight over Rift Herald. Blue team may not realize what's going on, that all five members are just going to melt Rift Herald down. Otherwise, they might have tried to contest that. And so almost everybody on the... Uh, there it is. Everybody on the team now has their mythic items completed. We've got two Rift Makers over on Mordekaiser and Diana. Oh, a little engage is coming out here onto the uh, onto the Draven and to the uh, Leona. Yone takes quite a bit of damage. Zack on the backside to help meet in there, but we're going to see a teleport come out of the Mordekaiser. Yone is going to barely make it out. He might just fall, but he manages to skirt away with his life. Mordekaiser teleport interrupted by the Shin and doesn't quite join the fight. 
And this is a spicy game, guys. 17 minutes in, we've got 23 kills. They're uh, they're not afraid to trade out and have uh, a little bit of a brawl out. Mordekaiser alt drop, taking some turret shots. He can only get so far away in, far away in his own alt. He can't do too much here. And we see Mountain Drake is up. Red team uh, in position to possibly go ahead and uh, start this. We'll have to see if they're going to respect where the Zach's at or if they're going to go ahead and go in. Leona now joining over. Blast cone used. Blue team steps up. And a four-member red team is going to go ahead and melt the dragon down. Zack tries to bounce in, is not able to smite through. The red team is going to go ahead and start just melting through him. His passive is procced, and it's going to be locked up by the Diana, it looks like, while the rest of the team fights elsewhere. Yone chasing down the Leona. She's too tanky to fall. Um, they will take this Drake. That is Mountain Drake over the red team. MMT securing their first Drake of the game. Mordekaiser doesn't realize he's about ready to get pinched in between the Shin and a couple other players, and he falls to the Shin in the enemy jungle. We've got Diana with the engage now, still outnumbered. We've got Yone coming in, a big alt from him. He's able to lock down the kill on Leona. Silas gets the kill on to Diana, and we've still got a 3v2. Shin falls to Yone. Yone is just pumping out damage here. Silas gets the kill on Alistar, and Misfortune will trade over to Silas. It looks like we've got a 2v1. Draven running away for his life. And Yone is going to pump out some damage onto this turret if he can. I don't know that the Draven can stand up too much. He's going to go ahead and respectfully... No, he will stay in the area and try and defend here, especially with Zach re-engaging. Get the lock up. There it is onto that. The stun comes through. He tries to burst out of there as he's going to take him right back to a single place, but he will fall to the Zach. Draven will fall to the Misfortune, who comes back around and picks up the kill. And we're going to see how the rest of this game shakes out. Right now, it's a 4,000 gold lead in favor of the red team. The blue team has managed to close the gap, stop the bleeding. They've got to try and set the pace. Like I said, I think their team comp is more based around team fighting. However, if you get a good Yone alt with a good Diana alt, uh, with a good Misfortune alt, that can turn everything around as well. Uh, but the blue team's doing a great job stopping the bleeding, slowing the game down, playing at their own pace. They're trying to catch up. Um, they're not letting the gold lead get too far ahead. And that's what they've got to do. They've got to try and look for these picks like they're going to try and do on Mordekaiser here. Oh, no. Sorry, I thought the Zack and the Shen were going to head over towards Mordekaiser and try and lock him down. However, the Zack is going to go ahead and just hang out in the area, get some vision cleared, and let the Shen kind of respectfully defend that Tier 2 turret. There's the Alistar engage onto the Draven. He finds himself caught out, taking quite a bit of damage. He pops his, uh, ooh, unfortunately he is not able to survive with the, uh, with the Immortal Shield Bone proc. There's the Rift Herald knocking down the Tier 2 turret. It looks like with that many members of the red team in the area, they're going to try and march this thing down to the base turrets now. Zack jumps in, trying to slow everything down. The Misfortune alt comes out and melts through the Shen. The uh, Zack is trying to defend, however, he finds himself very low in health here and just trying to hover in, in the area, trying to keep him away from the inhib. He is going to get ignited, take some damage here, and uh, try and keep people in the area for the Silas to catch. But after a couple turret shots, it will be a one-for-one -one trade for the Zack, um, not quite able to lock down the kill on anybody else. They will get topside inhib, and the red team will go ahead and back off and reset. Uh, there are some pings coming out. They may try and clear out some of the jungle. They may even try and go for Baron at this point. Ooh, there's Leona stepping up a little premature without anybody to back her up and outnumbered. And at this point in the game, again... It's kind of gotten out of hand. We've got ourselves a 9,000 uh, 9, gold lead over on the side of the red team. They were able to knock down all three of the uh, turrets on the top side as well as the inhib. 
Uh, they were able to get a good trade and win some fights down at, at the base, and that's what they uh, that's what they've done the whole game, and it puts them at now, like I said, a uh, an almost nine thousand gold lead. <laughs> Alistar and Zach run into each other in the jungle and just kind of bounce away from each other. They don't want any part of that. Zack and Shin are going to find themselves a little out of position here with the Mordekaiser and the Alistar both in the area. Misfortune and Yone coming down. They are going to get pinched here, and it looks like Shin is realizing he's got nowhere to go. Zack engaging, trying to put a little relief. He gets the stun on to Misfortune, but these two tanks are not going to be able to soak up that much damage. There goes Zack taking a lot of damage. The Yone comes in and will secure the kill on to Zack. Only thing the Zack could do there was not engage and let the Shin die, so it was a matter of who do you trade out. With Drake coming up in two seconds, he might have made the other choice. We'll never know if it was the right one or not. But the red team is going to go ahead and start their second mountain Drake of the game, while the rest of the team pushes on to the bot 2 tour to it. And there's the second mountain. <clears throat> There's the second mountain. Drake, a lot of damage coming out onto the Draven. Mordekaiser just taking shots, not afraid. He's going to continue to chase under the turret. He is a very tanky boy. Misfortune Alt comes out and melts through the Leone and the Draven. Shin is able to go ahead and lock up the kill on the Mordekaiser, who took at least five or six turret shots without any fear. And the red team will find themselves in a one for three trade, pushing on the bot side now. They've got pressure and super minions coming in on the top side, so they have no fear about taking this fight. The Diana Alt coming through and there is the ff from the blue team so top gap looks like they go ahead and forfeit the match and that is one win for mmt stay tuned where we get the second out of the three games thank you very much for tuning in All right, thank you very much for tuning in. We are going to take a small intermission, about 15 minutes, while we go ahead and get some things sorted out between the teams. This match will continue on. We appreciate you very much for staying with us, and come back in about 15 minutes to see Game 2 of the series. Will Top Gap be able to match it up and do one for one, or will MMT go ahead and get a two for one lead in the series? You'll find out here in about 15 minutes. Thanks for tuning in.
All right, and thank you for tuning back in. After that brief intermission, we now have all players back in, and the pick band phases are underway. We are going to see Velkaz band out again. This will be the second game we don't get to see him. The enemy team has enough respect for the way the Alistar was played. They don't want to see him played at all either. Lulu is still a very strong support, not going to be played this game either. And there goes Kane. Kane has been very strong. His, uh, his gank potential is just something that you have to respect. The Shen will not be part of the game as he is going to be banned out. His ult came in uh, handy several times last game. Additionally, he chunked out that Mordekaiser early. And um, the Yone is also going to be banned out, who's somebody that we saw last game that was just doing a lot of work for the red team. So we're going to see Camille picked here. Camille is a, uh, she was banned last game, so it's interesting to see her pick. She's a, not a, not a bad laner at all, but definitely not in meta right now, so I'm excited to see how this plays out. We've got, uh, Gragas being picked, and Tristana. Tristana is a great hyper carry, um, especially with the way that she can take turrets with her empowered E and everything else she will move through the, uh, move through the team. We've got a Nocturne coming in. He was banned last game, I'm excited to see him in lane this time. Um, he'll probably be going, it looks like he's going to be going jungle, um, which is interesting. You've been seeing Nocturne played a lot in lane lately, so I'm excited to see that come through. We've got a Malzahar, and then the Zac we're going to see again. And uh, Malzahar is a great team fight with the suppression, the silence, and everything that he puts out against the enemy team. That's going to be a nice pick to see how it uh, plays out in the games. We've got... The rest of the band's coming through. Jen and Diana are going to get banned out. And then Malphite and Jax. Looks like they're putting a lot of pressure onto the top laner there. We've got Yasuo. Senna. Senna is a very strong pick. The Infinite Scaling Divine Sunderer build is really in play right now. So I'm excited to see that pick come out. And Leona, so it looks like it will uh, not be a feasting Senna, but it will be a, a, a famine Senna, Senna, but it will be a feasting Senna. I wonder how they're going to play around trying to get her uh, soul stacked up this game. And there's the Seraphine locked in. So it looks like Gragas is going to be going into Camille, Zach is going to be going into Nocturne, the Malzahar going to be going into Yasuo, and then we have a Tristana Seraphine into Senna Leona. Um, I'm excited about these combos. Let me know if you're uh, watching right now in the chat. Who do you guys think won the draft? Do you think it's the Camille Nocturne, Malzahar, Senna, Leona, Blue Team? Or do you think it's the Gragas, Tristana, Zach, Yasuo, Seraphine Team, the Red Team? MMT is blue, Top Gap is red, and the game will be underway shortly. Um, let's kind of take a look at everything here. I like the front-to-back uh, fighting style of the red team. They seem to be a little bit more traditional, two kind of tanky members with the Gragas and the Zac. You've got some AP coming out on the Seraphine, and then you've got your Yasuo for a little bit of burst and uh, your Tristana for your DPS. All right, we've already got votes here. The blue side is going to be taking the W on this from Internal Malice. I'm excited to see uh, some interaction here. Thank you. Um, we've also got the Camille, the Nocturne, the Malzahar, the Senna, and the Leona. Um, I think the team fight potential there is really strong as well. You've got the Nocturne gank that you've got to respect. You've got the stun coming out from Camille as well as the lockdown with her ult, the suppression with the Malzahar, and the stun and the CC coming out of Leona as well as Senna for that matter, and the heal and sustain from Senna. You've got to really respect that team comp as well. Uh, I'm excited for this match. I think it's going to offer a little bit, I think they're a little bit, um, more set up for team fights as opposed to I feel like the other the other match was more set up for the red team getting skirmishes and just picking the other team apart they'd go ahead and catch the the shin someplace out of order they'd catch the um, you know they'd catch the enemy jungler someplace out of order and they would just go ahead and abuse that um, this looks like it's going to be a lot more set up for team fighting um, and I love to I love to shout cast team fights number one uh, but number two, uh, I love to watch the team fights. I, I think uh, seeing how different teams are able to play around a fight and utilize their abilities is, is a really fun way to watch the game and probably the most, uh, the most pure form of the game, if you will. So I'm excited for that. 
I'm surprised, like I said, Nocturne not going into a lane that he's going to be jungling. I play Nocturne in the jungle sometimes. Uh, I do love Nocturne in the jungle. His gank potential is unreal. So that's going to be something that the enemy team has to respect a lot and play around, is just knowing that his level 6 is going to be, once it's up, his cooldowns maybe a minute on that, maybe a little bit longer at first, but it comes down quite a bit. Um, so you've got to be ready for that. You've got to always assume his paranoia is up and that he can jump on you and get some kills out. Um, on the flip side of that, you've got Zach who can just jump and bounce over and also create quite a bit of a distance gap closer for you. So the junglers are both going to be gank city, basically. They're going to be coming in and looking for uh, opportunities to get into this game and, and try and turn the tides quite often. But I'm excited for this game. So, for the next minute or so, enjoy the music, and we'll get loaded up here in a second, and you'll be able to enjoy Game 2 of the series between Top Cap and MMT. Alright, and as we load in, let's take a look at some of the runes and summer spells they're going to have out here. The Camille, not taking Flash, going to be going Ignite and Teleport. Everything else is looking relatively standard. Again, that Yasuo going for Ignite over Teleport. They're not going to be trying to play the map with the kill game more so. Senna taking Barrier, not Heal. Interesting. Um, and then you've got the Ignite on Leona and the uh, Exhaust on the Seraphine. So, very excited to see this game play out. Again, it looks a lot more to me like the uh, <clears throat> the red team is going for the kill pressure and the blue team is going for the uh, playing the map and, and fighting it out. So I'm excited to see how this all works out. Those are some beautiful skins across the board. I love the Hextech Nocturne, by the way. And let's get everything set up here in game for you guys to see this show unfold. Right, and not everybody's where they need to be here. There we go. Alright, buys are coming out across the board. Let's see if we have anything crazy going on. Challenging Smite going over to Nocturne. Chilling Smite for Zack. And uh, looks like Seraphine's going to go with the Spell Thieves going for a little bit of poke there. And um, we'll see how this all unfolds. Both teams look like they're going for a relatively standard 5 point out across the map here. Nothing too crazy. Last game we saw the exact same thing. Gragas getting positioned. Gragas might find himself caught out here between the Nocturne and the Camille. He looks like he's going a little bit deeper. And we are going to see those two. He might have to blow his flash here in the Herald Pit. Taking a lot of damage. He's able to scoot over. He didn't have to blow his flash at all. Lucky he took that as his first ability but he will go ahead and back here, reset real fast. Both junglers are going to do the same thing and swap over to their uh, sweepers. And here... We go. Both teams gonna start. Both junglers gonna start uh, bottom side here. Get a leash from their bot duos. Last game we saw Diana start on the red side, uh, top side. And it looks like both junglers are gonna go for a full side clear.
the engage from Camille to stun up the Gragas for a moment, and now putting some autos onto him, chunking him out a little bit. He went ahead and took Biscuits. He's looking for the sustain game. He's not trying to get chunked out immediately, but knows he's going to take damage. Now Camille finding herself the one with a little bit less health here in the trades. Fighting into the red wave as well. Yasuo doing what Yasuo does, skirting across the lane and just putting out damage every time he gets near that Malzahar. Well played. And we've got both junglers doing a full clear on the bot side and now matching over to the top side. And we expect this Tristana wave to push, right? That's what she does. Her wave's always, always going to push. It's very hard for her to freeze. So I'm looking for the uh, the Nocturne to play around that once he makes his way bot side and to take advantage of the lane positioning there for the other team. That's a deep soul. Senna does manage to pick it up with her Q. And uh, Nocturne hanging out around top side. Greg is not really in a position where he can make much of it. Looks like Zack is going to be coming in for the gank here mid. And we're having a little bit of lag going on mid, so the game is paused. After it's unpaused, we will have a little bit of a um, freeze in the game as it freezes every time there's a pause. Let's take a moment to look at the state of the map. We've got, obviously, um, Zach mid-gank coming in on the Malzahar here, and um, we'll have to see how that plays out. Nocturne finds himself up a little bit of CS overall. Camille finds herself up a little bit. Malzahar is up a little bit, and Senna is down almost a wave, if not two. Gold pretty even across the board. Let's see if anything's going to come of this uh, pause that we've got going on. And my daughter is uh, voicing some support for the blue team here, saying that she thinks they're going to win. And there goes first blood over to Yasuo, manages to get the kill onto the Malzahar. Malzahar, however, is able to get out of there and trade back into the Yasuo. This is the mid-game freeze I knew was going to come up, so please bear with us as this uh, loads through real quickly. But yeah, Yasuo kind of... Kind of unfortunately had to tower dive there, took an extra turret shot, and was not able to survive that. Comes back with Berserker Greaves, while the Malzahar is going to be sitting on two Amplifying Tombs. And now Zack catching himself out of position here. He's going to get locked up by the Senna. The Tristana goes in onto the... Uh, I'm sorry, he gets locked up by the Leona. Tristana goes onto the Senna. Tristana taking a lot of damage here. She very easily could fall as flashing away to survive. It's a 3v2 now. Zack might bust his passive. The Seraphine has to flash away. Senna outputting a heck of a lot of damage. And they're going to mop up this Zack. And that will be the kill over to Senna. Yes, well, started Roam down there, wasn't quite able to get there in time before the tides of the battle had turned, and so he goes ahead and goes back to mid lane. There's the Seraphine taking a lot of damage from the Senna. The Ignite goes off, and she is going to escape barely with her life. Yes. Malzar has to give a lot of respect to this, uh, this Yasuo. He can't quite step up into him, trying to avoid that. Luteed is able to lock up the first Drake, and that will be a Cloud Soul going over to the side of MMT. 
the next soul is going to be an ocean drake so again we're going to see a mountain or we're going to see an infernal and leona with the flash done to lock up the aswo so that mouse can get that kill back onto him putting him up two and one in the lane for the most part top is pretty much just doing what top does setting on their island farming it out a little bit uh, the Camille has been pushed up quite a bit here and keeping the uh, Gragas behind the 8-ball. He's down about 10 CS, hasn't quite been able to catch up. Uh, this is a huge wave to deny for the Aswo. Uh, hopefully Malzahar is able to deny a little bit there. And if you're just tuning in, this is game two out of three between MMT and Top Gap. MMT is the blue team, Top Gap is the red team. MMT won the first game, and so this is kind of determining uh, if they're going to win the series overall or if they are going to have a little bit of a uh, challenge coming back in. Right now, red team engaging a little bit onto this uh, Leona there. And right now, the bot lane is just kind of going to farm it out. The Senna's uh, up a little bit in CS, about one wave. It looks like she might be able to catch a uh, majority of the second wave that's crashing in there, giving themselves a, a nice little lead up along with the kill. They're up about 1,000 points MMT over top gap right now, and uh, Gragas has got to be happy with being able to freeze this wave here a little bit. He's going to try and hold it in the area with Zach showing topside, but Nocturne's roaming, and so is Malzahar. We could find ourselves with a fight on the topside. Zach is going to back. I wonder if he's going to spot out the... Yep. There goes the Nocturne Paranoia down. The ultimate comes out of Camille, and there's a lot of damage going on to that er, Gragas. A couple shots from the turret going over to the Nocturne. He has to flash to get out of there. Zach, not having his passive up, will fall to the Camille. And now we've got a fight breaking out bot side. We've got the Senna going in on the Seraphine. She will fall. Tristana trying to get a hold of the Senna, but she has to get out of the CC coming from the Leona, and she will not be able to lock up a kill. That is a 3-0 trade. Over to the side of MMT, up with three more kills now. They find themselves at a 3k gold advantage. Yeah, so continuing to throw out those tornadoes, trying to catch one onto the Malzahar. And there goes the Zack, trying to catch up onto the Leona. Tristana going to put out a little bit of damage, but right now she's just too tanky. The stun lands on the Zack from Senna. They find themselves outnumbered in a 4-2 to two here right now, but Nocturne is on the way. Dragon not up for another minute and 50, so nothing will really come of this besides just a little bit of trading and getting some people out of position. Malzahar is able to try and catch up his... Uh, Try and catch up the gold lead for mid. Let's take a look at where all the gold stands real quickly. We've got Camille up about 700. We've got the Nocturne up about 700. We've got uh, Malzahar in about a 200 gold lead. And if we look in the bot lane, we find that Senna is up almost 1100 at this point. So there's a, a lot of gold lead over to the side of MMT across the board. It's not on any one person, but it looks like the Senna and the Malzahar are kind of taking the lead and going to be the carries for this game. No surprise there, but that's the way it's looking. Greg is finally crashing his wave into the Camille now, putting her on the back foot, but puts himself in a disadvantageous position. He just used his teleport shortly ago, so he's still about halfway through the cooldown on that. Nocturne is to his top side, um, and his paranoia is up, so that's very uh, very unfortunate for the Gragas that he could be putting himself in a position to get ganked again. There's the engage from Gragas. A little bit of damage going on to the Camille. She looks for the stun, gets it. Chunks out some damage onto the Gragas. It is returned. He's going to go ahead and freeze the wave, or at least let hold it out so that he can get uh, most of the CS still crashing in.
And Malzahar taking quite a bit of damage is able to go ahead and suppress the Yasuo. The Paranoia comes out and they are able to lock up the kill. Senna's ult is ultimately will, will finish him off. And that is a good fight breaking out in mid. Nice job to lure in the Yasuo by taking quite a bit of damage then turn the suppress on him. Pair that with two alts and you've got yourself a nice little party in the mid lane. And Dragon is spawned. We find uh, a lot of members from the blue team roaming into the area trying to get Pryo onto the Dragon and go ahead and stack this Cloud Drake up. I'm sorry, go ahead and stack this Ocean Drake up with the Cloud Drake. Zack's going to back knowing very well that there's not much he can do. And we're going to see an Infernal Drake as the soul that these teams will be fighting for. Here comes the Rift Herald getting dropped mid. Three men pressure coming in onto the turret. Yasuo having to back off. Not much Zack can do, and it will fall here. Boom, there it goes. First uh, first turret going over to the Nocturne. However, there's a lot of damage coming out onto the Malzahar. The Yasuo ult is used. He has to flash to get away. Zack catching himself out of position. His passive is popped, and he's going to take quite a bit of damage as they go ahead and try and secure down the kill there. Leona going in on the Yasuo, trying to keep him maintained. And there goes the Paranoia again from Nocturne. A lot of damage comes out on the Yasuo, who skirts away. And now Seraphine out of position. Quite a bit of damage going in. The stun lands on the Yasuo, and that is going to be a 3 for 0 in favor of MMT. Leona does secure one of the kills, while Malzahar will get the other one. And this is a 7,000 gold game at just 12 and a half minutes in. There's Tristana with the flash, jumps over the silence, the suppress comes down on her, and uh, she does manage to go ahead and get the kill using her ult on the Malzahar to blast him away after using that suppress. She's going to go ahead and back and take that kill and reset everything. Only person with a mythic completed at this point is the Malzahar. He's got his Leandries online, so that's interesting to see how that's playing out right now. Zack engaging heavily here, taking a little bit of damage. His passive not up. Yasuo trying to chase down the enemy team. The slow comes out and the tornado comes out. Unfortunately, neither one of those connect and the blue team will be able to walk away unharmed. We're still about three minutes out from Dragon Spawn. Rift Herald won't be up for another 240, so no real objectives for these teams to fight over on the map coming up anytime soon. We're just going to see them getting into some good old-fashioned team fights here shortly. Camille doing quite a bit of damage onto the uh, onto the Gragas with her empowered auto. And here comes the Zack in for the gank onto the Camille. She finds herself in a very unfavorable position, and now it's a 3v1. She drops her ult, it's a 4v1, and they are able to get the kill over to Tristana for that Camille. If that's what it takes to get a kill, four members need to roam around this map together. As soon as they get some towers down, they will be a formidable force. And Tristana and Seraphine now rotating topside. Senna's going to be going ahead and going to the mid lane. And folks, if you're watching, is this how you thought it would turn out? Did you think it would go a little bit differently? I want to hear your opinions on how you're watching the game unfold and how you like it so far. Uh-oh, Greg is getting chased down by the Malzahar, the Leona, and the Nocturne. He is able to get out of the Leona R's range and gets away with his life. Nocturne going to go ahead and take a little bit of the... Uh, jungle while he's in the area. Greg is going to try and take it, but isn't able to do so. Dragon will be spawning on the map in just about one minute. Oh, forgive me. Hey, 
And there comes the uh, kill onto Gragas from the Malzahar, assisted by the... Uh, oh, no assist coming from the Senna. Oh, Camille finds herself caught out. She gets knocked back by the Tristana. Quite a bit of damage coming out with the Zac there for the assist, and it looks like they're going to be putting pressure on that top tier one turret. Blue team is pushing in heavily three-man bot, and they're going to try and get this tiered tier two bot side turret. Leona looking to get the stun and keep that Seraphine back from defending. And internal malice. This is, uh, figured it would be something like this. Didn't think mid or top would get caught out like they did. Gragas has put himself in a couple unfavorable positions and Nocturne has been able to make the right ganks at the right time, landing his fears, landing his paranoia and making things happen. That is Tristana getting the uh, tur first turret for the red team there, dropping down that tier one outer turret on the top side. And this will be the third Drake the blue team is going to get, securing their first Infernal and putting them on Soul Point at 16 minutes into the game. We could see a 21-minute Soul. That would be a little crazy. Um, Rift Herald is up, and we might see the team start moving up into that area as it still is going to be on the map for another uh, three minutes or so. Blue team has quite a bit of map pressure. They've got all of the bot side turrets, the tier one turret, and they have a lot of damage onto the tier two turret mid and the tier one turret top side. So they find themselves in a good position here to keep pressuring the map and playing as they need to. Blue team trying to respond. I mean, uh, red team trying to respond by getting that top turret from... Uh, and we'll have to see what happens here. Tristana was able to lock up that kill. Uh, or was rather able to lock up that Rift Herald, but she will fall. Leona puts out quite a bit of damage while they're caught into the Rift Herald pit, and Malzahar is going to secure the kill with the silence as she roams out of there. Leona, not afraid at all, finds herself 2v1 and is thinking about continuing the fight. Knowing that Malzahar is there, she's going to do it. Locks up the Zack. Silence comes out. They're both going to run away. Senna putting out a lot of damage onto the Seraphine. Leona goes in, gets the stun under the turret, taking turret shot after turret shot. The paranoia from the Nocturne comes out, secures the kill on the Seraphine. Zack taking quite a bit of damage. It looks like his passive is going to be popped. Meanwhile, Gragas is chasing down the injured Leona and the injured Senna, trying to get the kill. Malzahar does manage to get the kill, though. And, uh, I mean, Malzahar does manage to get the Tier 2 turret. And now Gragas is going in heavy onto the Nocturne. Quite a bit of damage coming out, but the fear comes through. Tristana chasing by. Gets her E on him. It does a little bit of damage, but nothing is going to come of it. She might be chasing kind of hard into a three-man trap there. She sees it, respects it, backs off. Now Malzahar out of position here in the mid lane. Gragas going in. Yaswell going in. Tristana going in. Malzahar drops the silence, drops the suppress. Is going to melt through the Yaswell, but he will be able to get the uh, alt off from the knockup that looks like it came out of the Gragas. And that is exactly what the red team needs to be doing. They are starting to uh, starting to catch up a little bit. We are still at about an 8,000 gold game. But uh, after nine minutes, the gold lead isn't growing too far. The blue team is trying everything they can to continue to set the pace on the map to continue to dominate. However, the red team is doing well. They're catching the blue team out of position. They're catching the blue team when they're low on health. Leona has been getting a little sloppy with thinking uh, you know, with how, with how tough she is going under turret dives and taking a little bit too much damage. She is a big tanky girl. She is sitting on the locket. She is sitting on another Kendall gem. She's got the Moby boot, so she's able to roam and make that potential. But she's got to have respect for the turrets. She's got to have respect for the damage output that will come from the Aswo, from the Tristana. Um, if you don't have that, you will get blown up. And so we find ourselves about 20 minutes in. The dragon going to be spawning in two minutes. Harold going to uh, Baron going to be joining us here in just a couple seconds. MMT is up overall about eight kills, about eight thousand gold. Uh, they have a lot of pressure. They have all the drakes so far. They have most of the turrets on the map. And with Baron spawning, it looks like they may put themselves in a position where they want to go ahead and start this Baron right at 20 minutes. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Camille going to stay topside. Her teleport is not up, so if she wants to be in this fight, she's got to hang out in the area. Not quite melting the Baron like you would hope they would, but they've got it almost down to a quarter health. So far, the red team seems to be none the wiser. And that's going to be Baron on to the blue team. Now with Baron buff, Gragas is getting engaged on by the uh, Camille. 
uses her R, puts a lot of damage out, but now that Tristana's here, she's going to go ahead and blow up that Camille. The blue team is going to chase Zach down over by the dragon pit. Dragon spawning here in just under a minute, so it'll be very bad if he gets killed here. He's going to use the blast cone to get away? No, he's not. He's going to hop and manages to get away with his life. Well played there. And here comes the red team. They managed to get that Rift Herald earlier when Tristana was sneaking around before she passed. And then they were going to go ahead and wail on this mid turret and try and put some counter pressure onto the map. And they managed to save that hit from going down. They are going to save full health charge here for the tier 2 turret. Uh, they're not going to escort that. They are going to walk away. Dragon coming up here in just 10 seconds. They're going to help go ahead and try and use the pressure they were able to get from the Rift Herald and uh, secure an Infernal Drake and stop the blue team from stacking soul. I don't know if it's going to work for them, but we'll find out here. Let me get rid of this so that we can see what's going on. Okay. Leona taking quite a bit of damage. The Nocturne drops his uh, Paranoia. Yasuo all comes out. This is a lot of back and forth. A lot of damage coming out, and it looks like the first one to fall is going to be the Zack. Now we've got the Nocturne falling. We've got the blue team cutting through. That's a triple kill for Malzahar as he secures the Gragas kill. Tristana trying to get out of there, taking quite a bit of damage from the Camille, and that is a team ace in favor of MMT. They are going to go ahead and lock up this dragon. That will be the fourth Drake of the game, and we'll put them on Infernal Soul. And that is the FF coming out of the Top Gap game, and we will see MMT up 2-0 in the series. We'll have to stick around and see if we get a game three. Um, it could have been a best of. It might be a three block. I will let you know here shortly, but thank you for tuning in. All right, everyone, it looks like we're not going to be able to get a uh, third game out of the series. We will see MMT winning this uh, series 2-0. Two, two um, and if you like content like this, I cast almost every night. I like to try and get high-level amateur games and scrimmages out. So if you want to see more games like this, go ahead and hit the follow button. Go ahead and subscribe. And uh, it's always appreciated if you, uh, if you want to do anything else. I'd love to have you here every night. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we will see you guys tomorrow night. Thanks, and GG.